Hmm. They don't mince words, do they? Well, let's hear what two real experts have to say about it. Our special guest today is Dr. Walter Williams, a nationally syndicated columnist and professor of economics at George Mason University. And our host and resident expert is the chairman of the National Endowment for Liberty, Ron Paul. Ron, there seems to be a lot of anger in those people. Boy, I don't think there's any doubt about it. And from my experience traveling around the country, I have met a lot of angry people, a lot of people who are very upset. They're upset with the taxes they pay. They're upset with the Internal Revenue Service. They're upset with the tactics. And I'm just wondering whether, from your experience, uh, Dr. Williams, whether you've come across this same situation. I've come across the same thing. <clears throat> But it really gives uh, a lot of meaning to what uh, Benjamin Franklin said after he left the, uh, the, convention, the Constitutional Convention in 1787. He said, when the people find that they can vote themselves money, that will herald the end of the republic. Now, what I mean by that is that, of course, there's a need for government. Of course, there's a need for taxes. But government should be doing those kind of things that are legitimate functions of government, namely, protecting you and I from international thugs uh, taking our property, from domestic thugs taking our property, and maybe it shouldn't be involved with the adjudication of disputes. But government has gone beyond its legi legitimate functions. It has engaged in immoral behavior. Namely, two-thirds of our budget is <coughs> represents acts where the government confiscates the property of one American and gives it to another American to whom it does not belong. And this is why we need, we can't uh, but avoid uh, uh, such a, a horrendous tax system that we have now. You know, Frank uh, Chadaroff wrote uh, that we've had two revolutions in this country. One, our original revolution, which was opposed to high taxation. And he said the other revolution literally occurred in 1913 with the institution mm -hmm. of the income tax. Do you think it's that significant? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, matter of fact, I think that the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the 1913 amendment was it's, it's typical what Congress does to us. They start out small and then they get very, very big. Matter of fact, I think the withholding tax was only to be a temporary tax, uh, the so-called victory tax during World War II. And uh, I think that uh, surely the, um, the, um, uh, the tax code, making the tax code a part of the Constitution, was a very, very significant uh, uh, change. It was a revolution that confiscates private property. It makes us serfs in our own country. That, that is right, and it seems like one feeds on itself. Government was not huge in 1913 and 1914, but once we as a people endorsed this concept yes. that government could take this revenue, it seems like the politicians had no problems in figuring out <laughs> what type of largesse they could pass out, and it looked like the people were rather receptive. So is the basic problem uh, a problem with the politicians, or is the basic problem with the American people who are saying, oh, no. you know, we want more things? It's a problem with the American people. That is... <coughs> First of all, the IRS is doing what Congress wants the IRS to do. Congressmen are doing what voters send them to Washington to do. That is, uh, congressmen and senators are voted into office because they promise their constituents that they will use the power of their office to confiscate the property of one American and bring it back to them, either in terms of aid to higher education, highway funds, uh, catastrophic health care, and all kinds of programs. So uh, it's a congressman running on a platform of not doing that. That is, if he said to his constituents, You're, I'm not going to use my office to bring you back money, somebody else's money, he would not get elected to office. So it's we the people who are to blame. That is, each of us think that our particular program is very, very important, but everybody thinks that their particular program is important, and if Congress does what we all want it to do, we're going to wind up with something that nobody wants, and the people on the show showed that uh, the thing that we're winding up that, with, that nobody wants is an oppressive IRS. On occasion, I've taken the position, uh, quite frankly, I, I don't believe we need the income tax, and we don't need the Internal <coughs> Revenue Service. But as an economist, what's your reaction? Do you think that we would get into economic problems if the government wasn't there to do certain things to benefit the economy, or could we uh, make it without that uh, tax? Oh, oh my goodness! I think the I think I, <laughs> you know what. Well, I, I don't have to really give an answer to that question. That is, we have existed as a nation from 1776 up until 1913 without an income tax. And we became the most powerful and richest nation on the face of this earth during that period. So obviously it was not necessary. 
Uh, many things that we have, many things that government's doing now, oh, not necessarily. You know, if you look at the, uh, uh, the, the problems of the homeless, well, we've been a nation from 1776, 174 years, up until we had uh, HUD was put into office, and there weren't homeless people. Now, all of a sudden, as a result of HUD, now we have homeless people. If you look at area after area where government has intruded, the problem has become worse rather than better. Well, the liberal would come back and say, you're unconcerned, you don't care about the poor people, you don't want to help the people with houses, and, and you don't think we should tax people and put money into HUD? Well, if I, if, if, if I were a poor person today, concerned with housing, I would pray to God that HUD would be abolished. That is, totally and completely. Uh, totally and completely. That is, HUD has, in fact, destroyed far more housing than it has created. But <clears throat> getting back to the issue of the, of the program is that we have big government, and in order to finance big government, you're going to have to have oppressive taxes. And what Americans have to ask from their government is to have less government. Let me be free to keep my own paycheck. Let me find, let the people find their own solutions to their own problems. Well, don't you think the deficit contributes to this? I mean, if we were balanced our budget, there might be less incentive for the IRS agent to be so ruthless. So is the deficit skyrocket? Do you think this puts more emphasis on the IRS agent to collect more? I think it's just, the, 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 in, in any kind of meaningful economic sense, the budget is always balanced every single year. That is, we collect so much in taxes, then we inflate as a way of Congress uh, getting us to spend less, and then we enter the bond markets, drive up interest rates as a way to get us to spend less. So the issue should not, uh, deficit is, a, I believe, is a rather phony issue. The issue is spending. That is, if government spends $1.2 trillion, $2 trillion as it does today, of necessity, it has to find a way to get us to spend $1.2 trillion less. Dr. Williams, let's hold that thought for just a moment. We're going to take a brief break, and we'll return to more views and comments on the subject at issue in just a moment. Throughout this series of programs, you will see ideas examined that affect every part of your life. We'll look at issues from a new angle not from the left or the right, but from the perspective of individual liberty and responsibility. We believe our founding fathers were right. We are endowed by the Creator with certain inalienable rights, and among these is the right to life, liberty, and property. We do not accept your money transferred through state or federal government agencies. Instead, this series is funded by direct voluntary gifts from individuals. We are the National Endowment for Liberty, Call us right now, 1-800-333-3545, extension 909. For a transcript of this program, specify the subject and send $5 in a stamped self-addressed envelope to P.O. Box 580099, Houston, Texas, 77058. The National Endowment for Liberty, providing information on America's most precious resource, individual freedom. Okay, we're back. Ron, before the break and earlier in the program, we saw a mention of the Taxpayers' Bill of Rights. Let's talk about that. You know, I think this is interesting. Uh, originally, we had a Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. The Ten Amendments to the Constitution was supposed to be a Bill of Rights to protect our rights. And here, not too many years ago, I was a co-sponsor of a bill which I felt uncomfortable with, the fact that we had to have a Taxpayers' Bill of Rights. It's almost like the taxpayer isn't a citizen. I was a supporter of that amendment and uh, the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, but to me it was rather sad. And I was delighted uh, with the publicity, with uh, getting the Taxpayer's Bill of Rights passed, but it still made me a little bit uneasy. And uh, for instance, there was uh, one part in uh, one of the versions of the bill which was removed at conference, which was the key to the whole bill uh, that I had supported, and that was uh, the burden of proof. Don't you think this might have been the, the real issue? I, I think so. Matter of fact, I believe it was one congressman who was a supporter of the Bill of Rights. He says, we just want the IRS to treat the average American taxpayer like a criminal. That is, <laughs> give him the same rights that a criminal has. That is, give him Miranda warnings that the, whatever he says is going to be held against him in the court of law and, and, and require evidence and, and put the burden of proof on the state. That is, uh, that is many American taxpayers, uh, when they come before the IRS, they're not treated as well as murderers, robbers, and thugs, and all those evil people in our society. And I think that if we have something in there, as the congressman said, to get the IRS to treat us at, at least 
case as well as criminals are treated, I think that will be a, a, a great step in the right direction. You know, the other thing that has concerned me about the IRS is the confiscation of property. They don't prove that you owe the money. They can literally come in and confiscate your account and your car and your house and your boat, and then you go into court to try to get it back. And, and that seems to be a, a bit contradictory to the intentions of the founders in this country. Well, it's, it's surely it's, a, it's, it's contrary to the intentions of the founders, but I think we have to keep one thing in mind. That is, we cannot put the burden at the foot of the IRS. That is, those people who are working there, for the most part, there are people like you and I who are worrying about our mortgages, kids, sending kids to school. They're, they're American citizens. But but they are following orders, just like the Gestapo was following orders. They're following orders. And who are they following orders from? Uh, it's the Congress and the Senate. Of course, and what I'd like to see is a few more American people wake up and send some more orders to the American Congress <laughs> and change some of this. You know, there's an interesting thing. Also, they change the notification period of time from 10 days to 30 days before they can take money out of your account. But it's interesting how that backfired. Now the banks, if they happen to allow the people to spend or readjust uh, their accounts during that 30 days, the bank becomes liable. liable. Oh, that, that, yeah, that is awful. And it, more, more what, what, what that in effect does, it, it's the IRS taking the bank as part of its agency. It's using the bank as its collection agency, as it uses employers and everybody else. As and they just happen to have a license that would be jeopardized if they don't follow the rules. Yes. So in a way, we've reduced the time to zero days rather than extending yes. it to and 30. Yes, and I would like to see the question asked, well, look, if I owe the Bank of America or some private bank uh, or, or private uh, entrepreneur that kind of money, he does not have rights to walk into my account. Why should anybody else have rights? What's the difference? in my opinion. That is, individual rights and property rights should be, be upheld by the courts and you should not have any property taken from you until you've had your day in court. You know, and uh, there are restrictions against collecting agencies. You know, you're not allowed to call at night and you're not allowed to do what they call harassing to collect private debts. It would be interesting to apply some of those same rules to the IRS. Or if a, if a private debt collector did what we saw in the film where they smashed into that lady's car, he would be put in jail. Yes. He would be put in jail. There's no doubt. I think things are turned upside down. The government now is the uh, instrument of ruthless tactics, and the, the people are the victims. And it was supposed to be the other way around. The, the yeah. government was supposed to be protecting the uh, citizens from being, becoming victims. But this was anticipated by Thomas Jefferson. And Thomas Jefferson said that the general tendency of things is for government to gain ground and for liberty to yield. And that's what we're saying. Our, our time's getting short. We need to wind this up. So let me ask each of you to comment on the short run for a moment. Uh, Walt, what's the next step? What's the first thing we ought to do to improve life for us as taxpayers? Well, it's, a, it's, it's not a short step. We need to demand more moral government. That is, we, we need to demand that government get out of the business of confiscating the property of one American and giving it to another American to whom it does not belong. And we would find that we need a less abusive tax system. And Ron, your view? Well, I think the first thing we ought to do is remove that slogan from the IRS building that says that taxes is what we pay for a civilized society. Sometimes I think it's exactly the opposite. I think we have to wake the American people up and let them know that taxes is what uh, is confiscated from one group of people to be used by another group, and it's a form of theft. And as, as soon as the American people realize that, I think we'll get back to a sensible uh, approach to government. Well, that's where we'll have to leave it. On behalf of Ron Paul, I want to thank Walter Williams for being with us, and I want to thank you for watching. We'll be back next week with another vital topic at issue.